Welcome back, everyone. This is our third lesson uh, of our statistics unit on z-scores. So if you remember in the last video, we talked a little bit about that uh, bell curve, that normal distribution. Um, and we talked about things that had different, you know, contexts. One example, I think, talked about, you know, uh, weights of dogs. The other one talked about a number of trees. Uh, which are obviously very different things. Uh, now Z-scores offer us a way to really standardize everything. It uh, gives us a common way to talk about you know, any type of context or situation and, and still have them you know, graphed or plotted out um, on a bell curve. So they're a really nice way to standardize things. And we do this a lot, uh, especially when talking about marks uh, or grades uh, in a course, right? We talked a lot about percentages. Right. It's not usually helpful to, you know, tell somebody you got four out of five uh, on your English essay, uh, but you got, you know, 95 percent on your um, on your math exam. Right. It's just you have to convert them to the same type of units um, to really determine which one you did better on. Right. The fraction or decimal versus a percentage. Uh, many people, it's just easier to talk in terms of percentages um, than it is in a, a different, you know, measurement style. So. We won't really talk about this first part here because, um, you know, we can make our generalization and, you know, using the, the information we just talked about in order to make an actual comparison, we need to convert the data so it's all the same. And the way we can do that um, is by using what we call a Z-score. So consider somebody who, you know, scored 18 out of 30 on a science test, but 25 out of 40 on a math quiz, right? Using the fractions isn't necessarily the best option because they're out of different totals. Right, so to, to, to actually determine uh, which score is the higher one, uh, we would convert to a common scale. And you know, it, for many people, that is percentages when it comes down to marks, especially in school. But in statistics, we convert to something called the Z-score. Uh, and all it really is is a standardized value that indicates the number of standard deviations that we are from the mean. So uh, in a standardized normal distribution, we take the average as being 0.0. .0 right, the, the place where all of our data stems from. Um, and as we go out from that mean, uh, we talked in the last video about z um, standard deviations, right? And we always talked about, you know, one, two, or three standard deviations. Now, with regards to z-scores, those values, uh, instead of being, you know, standard deviations, they are going to turn into z-scores, right? So z-scores below the average are negative. They go on our left side. And Z scores above the average or positive, they go on the right side. Um, so it gives us a standardized way to discuss this, right? So if my mean is one, or sorry, if my mean is zero, sorry, I don't know why I said one. If my mean is zero, that's my central point, my point of symmetry around my bell curve. Well, a Z score of one would mean that I'm one standard deviation from that mean, right? If it was negative one, I would be, well, one standard deviation below that mean. That's all it really is, a way to give us a standardized measurement. So that those standard deviations now, if they're represented as a z-score, they could mean, well, the average, they could mean uh, dog weights, it could mean number of trees, it could mean heights of people, it could be IQ, it doesn't matter, but now it's a standardized way to talk about everything, which is where its power comes in. There's a formula to do this, um, and here it is in this box, a z-score formula, which lets us take, well, the average, uh, some specific data value, subtract the average, and divide by the standard deviation, and, you know, that will tell us where we lie uh, along this axis. So we'll use this formula a few times uh, to see exactly how it works, but it gets us to calculate, you know, relative distance uh, from that mean, essentially. So given a scenario, we're going to go calculate the z-score, right, where we would be left side of the average or right side it'll tell us you know if it's positive or negative so if needed round them to the nearest tenth so uh, this first one says Edmonton's average daily temperature in June is 21 degrees Celsius with a standard deviation of three degrees on a particular day in June the temperature is 15 right so if we're gonna go calculate the z-score for this specific scenario really we're looking at comparing this specific temperature day relative to the average. So again, our formula for z-scores, a specific z-score is equal to the data value, subtract the average, divide by the standard deviation. OK, 
Okay, so if I plug in what I know here, if I'm looking for z-score, I don't know that. The specific data value is 15. Okay, so a specific data value of 15. Minus the average temperature, so 21. Divide out the standard deviation of three. So you can see by this that the z-score isn't gonna have a unit because in this fraction, top and bottom, it's both degrees Celsius, which I really should add here, sorry. So let me fix this up. So 15 degrees Celsius minus 21 degrees Celsius divided by three degrees Celsius. So in the fraction, the, the units will cancel, right? They'll divide out, they'll simplify to one. I get negative six degrees Celsius on the top when I subtract divide by three. So really my z-score here is gonna be negative two. Now if I draw out a bell curve to show you what this might look like, because really that z-score has no meaning right now. Right, here's my bell curve. The mean would go in the middle, so the average is 21. Now, the specific temperature that we're talking about here is 15, right? Now 15 is a smaller value than 21. So it should be on the left side. And here are my standard deviations. So I know one standard deviation downwards was three degrees colder because my standard deviation is three. So this should be 18. And maybe I'll add that to the top just so it's not so cramped. So there's 18 degrees Celsius. So two standard deviations would be 15 degrees Celsius, which makes sense because we found out that Z score was two, but it was negative. The negative tells you I'm on the left side. The two tells me how many deviations I actually am, which really makes sense. So here, if the specific data point is 15 degrees Celsius, it's two deviations left. That really is all the Z score says, right? So two deviations left is what the negative two as a Z score really represents. And you can think about this again if I do this in terms of an average on a math exam. So the average is 72, standard deviation is seven, a student achieved a mark of 84. So we want to find out how much better they did relative to the rest of the class. So I can use the same formula, x minus the average, x again just a specific point of data, which this time is 72%, minus the average, uh, oh wait, sorry, uh, their mark is 84, 84% minus the average of 72 divided by my deviation of seven. So 84 minus 72 divided by seven, nearest tenth, 1.7. So I know from that number, we are 1.7 deviations to the right. Okay, so if it's positive, I know that this value is higher than the average, which makes sense, their mark is greater. And I know exactly where it will be on this standardized scale. Okay, you can think about this in terms of a runner as well. Average time for a sprint is 25.57 seconds standard deviation of 0.62 the athlete has a run time of 24.77 so we're really just trying to compare their time to the average are they better than average or are they you know worse than average are they slower or faster right so same formula for z score specific value minus the average divide out a standard deviation to really determine their place so 24.77 minus 25.77, or 0.57, sorry. So since their time is smaller, I know that my Z score is gonna be negative, right? Which is a good thing here um, because it means they're faster, right? They're better than average. Standard deviation of 0 0.62. So if we subtract, 
seven divided by 0.62. There we go. Negative 1.3. Okay, so negative here is better. Right? This signifies a faster runner. Right? In a race, you want to be first, right? So faster is better. Now, if we do one, this is, talks about the IQ scores, but really this will illustrate the fact that I could put data and Z scores on the same bell curve. And it really doesn't matter. It just gives us a way to visualize what we mean. Where this is a standard comparison. So IQ tests sometimes use to measure intellect, normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So we're going to label this curve uh, with the average and the values for three standard deviations. Basically, this is what we did in the last lesson. So my average is 100. If it's a deviation of 15, one standard deviation up will be 115. And if you keep on going, two standard deviations, that'll be 130 and 145. If you go the other way, we get 85 on the lower end, take out 15 again for 70, and one more for 55. Okay, so there are your values in terms of this specific context. But now, think about this in terms of Z scores. So in red, I'll put all the Z score values. And if this is a standardized scale, the average is always, always, always zero for a z-score. Now if I'm one standard deviation above, my z-score is going to be one, and then two, and then three, and same thing in the other direction, but just negative. Right? Remember your z-score just tells you the placement along this axis with regard to the standard deviation. So it just standardizes everything. So a z-score of three would give me a specific value of 145. A z-score in between 2 and 3 would give me a value that's actually in between 130 and 145. It's really all this means. So if I actually think about doing this example, a score of 125 isn't easily determined with this graph. I know roughly it'll be in between 1 and 2 in terms of z-scores, but I can't really place it super precisely. So if I use the z-score to do it, it's a little bit more exact, a little bit more precise when talking about this. So my formula again, Z score equals a specific value minus the average divided by the deviations. So I don't know the Z score, that's what I'm trying to find. The specific value is 125. So 125 minus 100 divided by 15 since that's the deviation. So 125 minus 100 divided by 15, about 1.7, which makes sense, right? If it's 125, that's in between 115 and 130, closer to 2, closer to the 130 side of things, so I know I'm in the right place. So it just really helps to standardize things and Z scores you can use to talk about any type of context. Okay, last example here. What happens if I actually know what the Z score is? Can I calculate some specifics about a certain scenario? Right, so on a university entrance exam, standard deviation of six and a, Z, and a score of 51 gives us a Z score of 1.5. Okay, so this mark of 51% is better than the average. Right is what this is saying. Oh wait, sorry, that Z score is negative. <clears throat> okay, that negative sign's actually there, so we'll write this as negative 1.5. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense. So 
this uh, Z score should actually be negative, so just be careful, a little bit of a typo there. So 51% is lower than the average. That makes a little bit more sense here. So same formula for Z score, specific value minus the average, divide by the standard deviations. So this time I know the Z score is negative 1.5. We'll put in everything else we know. So I know the specific mark is 51. That's what we're talking about. I don't know the average, but the standard deviation is 6. So if I go to solve this using everything I've learned, well, I can multiply both sides by 6. So negative 1.5 multiplied by 6 will get you to negative 9. That equals to 51 minus your average. If you subtract 51 from both sides, negative 60 is equal to the negative of the average mark so the average mark must be 60 percent right so the average of this exam and again I can draw you a picture right by average goes in the middle that's 60 and one standard deviation in the left or negative direction uh, would be 54 right since my standard deviation is 6 two standard deviations then that would be 48 right so I know that a mark of 51% uh, would be somewhere in, in this range right so that 1.5 so halfway right? here's my Z score of negative 1.5 which would give me that mark of 51 right that's where it would fall so Z scores give us a nice standard way to talk about everything which we can apply to a whole lot of different situations. So again, summary at the bottom of everything we just talked about. Um, and you know, in the, the notes there, I'll have some of those practice problems with the answers too, uh, that you can check out. So we've only got a couple lessons left. We're about halfway done statistics. So in the top, you should see the other one linked and uh, we'll see you in the next one.